Hi everyone and a very warm welcome to all of you to this episode of Mahabharat. This version of Mahabharat is the translated version of Ved Vyas Mahabharat by Kesari Mohan Ganguly. This is an honest attempt to share the version with the listeners. Adi Parv continued. Section 4 Paluma Parv Ugrasava Sauti, the son of Lomuharshna, versed in Puranas while present in the forest of Nemisha at the 12 year sacrifice of Shona, surnamed Kulpati, stood before the Rishis in attendance. Having studied Puranas with meticulous devotion and thus being thoroughly acquainted with them, he addressed them with joint hands thus. I have graphically described to you the history of Uttanka, which is one of the causes of King Janmejay's snake sacrifice. What revered sirs do you wish to hear now? What should, shall I relate to you? The holy men replied, O son of Lumharjana, we shall ask thee about what we are anxious to hear and thou wilt recount the tales one by one. Sonak, our revered master, is at present attending the apartment of the holy fire. He is acquainted with those divine stories which relate to the gods and asuras. He is adequately knoweth of the histories of men, serpents and gandharvas. Further, O Sauti, in this sacrifice, that learned Brahman is the chief. He is able, faithful to his vows, wise, a master of the Shastras and the Aranyakas, a speaker of truth, a lover of peace, a mortifier of the flesh, and an observer of the penances according to the authoritative decrees. He is represented by us all. It behoveth us, therefore, to wait for him. And when he is seated on his highly respected seat, thou wilt answer what that best of dwijas shall ask of thee. Sauti said, Be it so. And when the high soul master had been seated, I shall narrate, questioned by him, sacred stories on a variety of subjects. After a while, that excellent Brahman, Sonak, having duly finished all his duties and having propitiated the gods with prayers and the manes with oblations of water, came back to the place of sacrifice, where with Sauti seated before what the assembly of saints of rigid vows sitting at ease. And when Sonak was seated in the midst of the Ritviks and the Sadhyas, who were also in their seats, he spake all the following. Section 5. Poloma Parv continued. Sonak said, Child, thy father formerly read the whole of the Puranas. O son of Lomharshana, and the Bharata with Krishna Dwapayan. Hast thou also made them thy study? In those ancient records are the chronicled interesting stories and the history of the first generations of the wise men, all of which we heard being rehearsed by thy sire. In the first place, I am desirous of hearing the history of the race of Bhrigu. Recount thou that history. We shall attentively listen to thee. Sauti answered, By me had been acquired all that was formerly studied by the high soul Brahmins, including Vaishampayan, and repeated by them. By me had been acquired all that had been studied by my father. O descendants of the Bhrigu race, Attend then to so much as relateth to the exalted race of Bhrigu. 
revered by Indra and all the gods, by the tribes of Rishis and Maruts, the winds. O great Muni, I shall first properly recount the story of this family as told in the Puranas. The great and blessed Saint Prigu, we are informed, was produced by the self-existing Brahma from the fire at the sacrifice of Varuna. And Bhrigu had a son named Chayavan, whom he dearly loved. And to Chayavan was born a virtuous son called Pramati. And Pramati had a son named Ruru by Gritachi, the celestial dancer. And to Ruru also by his wife Pramadavarda was born a son whose name was Sonaka. He was, O Sonaka, thy great ancestor, exceedingly virtuous in his ways. He was devoted to ascetism, of great repulsions, proficient in law and eminent among those having a knowledge of the Vedas. He was virtuous, truthful and of well regulated fair. Sonak said, O son of Sutta, I ask thee why the illustrious son of Prigu was called Chayavan. Do tell me all. Sati replied, Prigu had a wife named Puloma, whom he dearly loved. She became big with child by Prigu. And one day, while the virtuous continent Puloma was in that condition, Brigu, great among those that are true to their religion, leaving her at home, went out to perform his ablutions. It was then that the Rakshasa called Puloma came to Brigu's abode. And entering the Rishi's abode, the Rakshasa saw the wife of Brigu, irreproachable in everything. And seeing her, he became filled with lust and lost his senses. The beautiful Puloma entertained the Rakshasa thus arrived, with roots and fruits of the forest. And the Rakshasa, who burned with desire upon seeing her, became very much delighted and resolved. O good sage, to carry her away, who was so blameless in every respect. My design is accomplished said the Rakshasa, and so seizing that beautiful matron, he carried her away. And indeed, she of agreeable smiles had been betrothed by her father himself to him, although the former subsequently bestowed her accordingly to due rights on Brigu. O thou of the Brigu race, this wound rankled deep in the Rakshasa's mind and he thought the present moment very opportune for carrying the lady away. And the Rakshasa saw the apartment in which the sacrificial fire was kept burning brightly. The Rakshasa then asked the flaming element, Tell me, O Agni, whose wife this woman rightfully is? Thou art the mouth of gods. Therefore, thou art bound to answer my question. This lady of superior complexion had been first accepted by me as wife, but her father subsequently bestowed her to the false Prigu. Tell me truly if this fair one can be regarded as the wife of Prigu for having found her alone. I have resolved to take her away by force from the hermitage. My heart burneth with rage when I reflect that Brigu had got possession of this woman of slender waist, first betrothed to me. Sati continued, In this manner, the Rakshasa asked the flaming god of fire again and again whether the lady was Brigu's wife, and the god was afraid to return an answer. Thou, O god of fire, he said, resident constantly within every creature, as witness of her 
or his merits and demerits. O thou respected one, then answer my question truly. Has not Prigu appropriated her who was chosen by me as my wife? Thou shouldest declare truly whether, therefore, she is my wife by first choice. After thy answer as to whether she is the wife of Prigu, I will bear her away from this hermitage even in sight of thee. Therefore, answer thou truly. Sauti continued, The seven flamed god, having heard these words of the Rakshasa, became exceedingly distressed. Being afraid of telling a falsehood and equally afraid of Brigu's curse. And the god at length made answer in words that came out slowly. This Poluma was indeed first chosen by thee, O Rakshasa, but she was not taken by thee with holy rites and invocations. But this far famed lady was bestowed by her father on Brigu as a gift from desire of blessing. She was not bestowed on thee, O Rakshasa. This lady was duly made by the Rishi Brigu, his wife, with Vedic rites in my presence. This is she. I know her. I dare not speak of falsehood. O thou best of Rakshasas, falsehood is never respected in this world. Sauti said, O Brahman, having heard these words from the god of fire, the Rakshasa assumed the form of a boar, and seizing, seizing the lady, carried her away with the speed of the wind, even of thought. Then the child of Brigu, lying in her body, enraged at such violence, dropped from his mother's womb, for which he obtained the name of Kayavan. And the Rakshasa, perceiving the infant drop from the mother's womb, shining like the sun, quitted his grasp of the woman, fell down and was instantly coveted into ashes. And the beautiful Puloma, distracted with grief, O Brahman of the Brigu race, took up her offspring Thayavan, son of Brigu, and walked away. And Brahma, the grandfather of all, himself saw her, the faultless wife of his son, weeping. And the grandfather of all comforted her who was attached to her son. And the drops of tears which rolled down her eyes formed a great river. And that river began to follow the footsteps of the wife of the great ascetic Prigu. And the grandfather of the world, seeing that river, followed the path of his son's wife, gave it a name himself. He called it Vasudhara. And it passed by the hermitage of Chayavan. And in this manner was born Chayavan of great ascetic power, the son of Prigu. And Prigu saw this child, Chayavan, and its beautiful mother. And the Rishi, in a rage, asked her, By whom wast thou made known to the Rakshasa, who resolved to carry thee away? O thou of agreeable smiles, the Rakshasa could not know thee as my vile. Therefore, tell me who it was that told the Rakshasa so, in order that I may curse him through anger. And Poluma replied, O possessor of the six attributes, I was identified to the Rakshasa by Agni, the god of fire, and he, the Rakshasa, bore me away, who cried like the Kurari or a female osprey. And it was only by the ardent splendor of this thy son that I was rescued. For the Rakshasa, seeing this infant, let me go and himself falling to the ground was turned into ashes. Sauti continued, Prigu, upon hearing this account from Poluma, became exceedingly enraged, and in excess of passion the Rishi cursed Agni, saying, Thou shalt eat of all things. 
So ends the sixth section called Curse of Agni in the Adi Purv. With this, we come to an end to this episode of Mahabharat and its heroes. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Until next time, this is your host, Madhulika Rajahan, signing off. Stay healthy always. Narayan Narayan.